the potency of imagination, insights from Neville Goddard. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. People assert that a genuine judgment must align with the reality it pertains to. This implies that if, while incarcerated, I convince myself that I am free and manage to genuinely believe in my freedom, it is true that I hold that belief. However, it doesn't automatically mean that I am truly free. I fall victim to an illusion, influenced by my personal experiences that have led me to believe in various extraordinary things. I find little reason to question the authenticity of things beyond my own encounters. The ancient masters cautioned against judging solely based on appearances because, according to them, the truth doesn't need to conform to the external reality it references. They contended that if we catch ourselves envisioning harm against another, despite our convictions, it may appear to align with the external reality, but if it doesn't liberate us, the belief is false. Therefore, we are urged to dismiss the evidence presented by our senses and imagine, as true for our neighbor, that which brings him freedom. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. To comprehend the truth about our neighbor, we must assume that he is the person he aspires to be. Any doubt we harbor about his fulfilled desire will not liberate him, thus, it cannot be the truth. Rather than acquiring my skills through conventional education, attending courses and seminars, considered substitutes for higher education, my learning was predominantly centered around the power of imagination. I invested hours envisioning a version of myself contrary to what reason and my senses dictated. Even these imagined states were lived as actuality, gradually becoming integrated into my imagination. They influenced my thoughts, actions, and speech, operating cohesively while I identified with my imagined state. Through imagination, man becomes the essence of himself, and the world, as perceived by imagination, is the authentic reality. Yet, it is our responsibility to conceive everything that is lovely and commendable. The Lord's perspective differs from that of man. While man focuses on outward appearances, the Lord delves into the heart. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. During meditation, when the mind becomes luminous, imagination, endowed with the magnetic power to attract anything I desire, shapes my life within. When I wish to witness a specific person or scene, I gaze as if I were genuinely observing what I desire, and the imagined state materializes objectively. If I desire to hear, I listen as if I were truly hearing, and the imagined voice articulates my words, as if it originated the message. I could furnish numerous examples to support my arguments, demonstrating that these imagined states materialize into physical realities. However, I understand that my examples may naturally evoke skepticism in those who have not encountered or inclined towards my arguments. Nevertheless, my experiences have unequivocally affirmed the validity of this truth. He speaks of things that do not exist as if they do, Romans chapter 4, verse 17. Through profound meditation, we envision the unseen as if it were tangible. The imperceptible not only transforms into the visible but ultimately materializes into tangible realities. By employing the approach of first harboring desires and then imagining the experience of those desires, we can mold the future in alignment with our aspirations. However, let us take heed of the counsel from the prophet and focus solely on love and goodness. Imagination stands ready, responding promptly when our inclination is towards love, just as goodness naturally emanates from us when our disposition is virtuous. Today, I present to you the choice between life and prosperity, death and adversity. Desire and imagination act as the magician's enchanted wand, drawing towards them corresponding affinities. They are most effective when the mind enters a state akin to slumber. While I have previously detailed the method I employ to access the dimensional and grander world, here is an alternative formula to unlock the door to the greater world in a dream or nocturnal vision. When profound sleep befalls individuals and they are not confined to their beds, it opens their ears and seals their instruction, Job 33 15, 16, 23. In dreams, we are typically subservient to our visions rather than their masters. Nevertheless, the inner fantasy of a dream can transition into external reality within the dream, akin to the meditative realm of a higher dimension. Contrary to the belief of contemporary psychologists that dream forms are flat two-dimensional images, they are substantial realities of the greater dimensional world. 
I have discovered that by jolting myself awake during a dream, I can grasp any inert or stationary form from the dream, a chair, a table, a ladder, a tree, and command myself to awaken. Clutching the dream object firmly, I am drawn through myself with a distinct sensation of transitioning from the dream into another realm. Holding the dream object, I realize that I am no longer subservient to my vision but its master, as I am fully cognizant and in control of the movements of my attention. In this conscious state, when we direct our thoughts, we speak of things that do not exist as if they do. In this state, we bring things into existence, assuming the sensation of our desires being fulfilled. Unlike the three-dimensional world, where there is a temporal gap between assumption and realization, in the greater dimensional world, assumption instantaneously results in fulfillment. External reality promptly mirrors our assumption. No waiting period akin to a four-month harvest is necessary, we look again as if we have seen, and lo and behold, the fields are already ripe for harvest. In this greater dimensional world, there is no need for struggle, re-establish yourself and witness the salvation of the Lord. And why is this expanded world gradually manifesting through our three-dimensional reality? Because the power of imagination sculpts our world in concordance with our desires. Gaze as if you are seeing, listen as if you have heard, extend your imaginary hand as if you have touched, and your assumptions will solidify into undeniable facts. For those who adhere to the notion that a valid judgment must align with external reality, the following might appear impractical or stumbling. Nevertheless, I advocate and practice the subconscious fixation of man's desired achievements. My experiences have convinced me that ingrained mental attitudes, even if divergent from external reality, often termed as imagining things that do not exist, can effectively eliminate undesired elements. I am not inclined to compose a collection of marvels, but at the core of what ancient teachers revered as God was, in essence, the consciousness of man. Therefore, we can affirm, as it is inscribed, he who glorifies, let him glory in his own consciousness. No one requires assistance in applying this law of consciousness. I am serves as the self-definition of the absolute. The foundational element of everything, I am the vine. Consider your enduring response to the query, who am I? Your reply dictates the role you play in the world's drama. Your response, your self-concept, need not align with external reality. This profound truth is encapsulated in the directive, let the weak say, I am strong. Reflect on past well-intentioned resolutions burdened by numerous new years, they sparked briefly and then faded because they were detached from their roots. Assume the identity of what you aspire to be. In your imagination, undergo the experiences you would have in the physical realm if you already embodied your desired state. Maintain fidelity to your assumption, thereby defining yourself in alignment with your chosen identity. Entities lack vitality when severed from their roots, and our consciousness, our I am, constitutes the root of all manifestations. Our world would wither without belief in I am. Similarly, you will stagnate in your aspirations if you do not believe in I am, meaning if you fail to acknowledge that you already embody what you desire to become. There exists no external power beyond man's consciousness capable of resurrecting and animating that which one wishes to experience within consciousness. The individual accustomed to pleasing mental images will, through the potency of imagination, command mastery over their destiny. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, shall live. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall emancipate you. I trust this content has proven beneficial to you, and you have gained insights from it. My objective with this channel is to aid your financial flourishing, with the understanding that it commences in the mind. However, I consistently emphasize the imperative role of action. If you found value in this, kindly leave a like and subscribe to fortify our channel, contributing to the continued illumination of the lives of many, akin to yours. Sending warm regards, and until the next video.